Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do another mandala. It's the first one of this new year. I hope you guys are all doing well. So I have one of these homemade stones. And it's perfect shaped. I just used a molding plaster and then I painted it black. Just with this matte black from Decor. And then I just used a sponge brush to paint it on so it didn't have a lot of lines. These plaster um, stones kind of soak it up so I did have to do two coats on this one. So I'm just going to eyeball for my center but you can measure for yours if you need to. And I'm going to start off with titanium white. And I'm kind of going to go with a pink Valentine's type theme since we're coming into February now. So I'm just going to use my brush here and just paint in the center circle with the white. And then I'm going to do my 90 degree angle, so like a plus sign, just do top and bottom and side to side. And if you need to, too, for the start of this, you can always etch into the black paint to draw some grid lines for you so you can be sure to get the angles where you need them to be. So these are, I'm going to go on the 45 degree angle, but instead of one dot in between my two at the 90s, I'm putting two. So it's going to kind of create that entire ring around the center, and they're all equidistant from one another. And I'm just stealing some white from the center here because it's still wet. All right, there you go. So next I have this lovely pink and I'm just doing dots in between the white ones that we just placed down. And you can let them dry in between if you're worried about them bleeding into one another, which often I do. You just can't tell in the videos. So I just pause it sometimes, let the first round dry, especially if you want to get them in tightly packed. That's just an easier tip, because if they're dry, then they won't bleed as easily. One of the great things about the black background, too, is if you make a mistake, you can always just kind of scrape the paint off that you were working with and just repaint over it black again. Or whatever your background color is at the time. So again, those are just in between the whites that we put down initially. So I'm going to pep it up a little bit with this next more vibrant pink here. And go a little bit larger with my dots. And I'm going in between that baby pink that we used on the round before this. All these paints I'll be using today are from DecoArt. And the Americana line is really rich in color. I, I'm really enjoying using these. Alright, so now I think I'm going to go a little bit larger with some bigger dots, still using the same brush, and then I want to put um, this shrimp color, it's kind of like a corally orange. I'm going to go quite a bit larger than the ones that I was creating with the pinks. 
That's one of the great thing about Mandal is just changing up the size too can change your whole design. It's so much fun to try new things, <laughs> switch it up a bit. Sometimes, too, with the brushes, you just kind of have to shape it into a circle because the dot is larger. You know, with the dotting tools, you can just place it sometimes and have it be the size of the dot you need. But with the paintbrush, you just kind of push it around a little bit into a circle. Some paints are thicker than others, too. You can thin them with um, a different medium, a flowing, flowing medium. I can't talk tonight. And that'll kind of help thin your paints. But these ones too, you can also just put a little bit of water in them and it'll help thin them too. I love how bright the corals look on this black background too. It's just such a great contrast. So this coral is just a little bit lighter than the shrimp. And I'm just going to do a ring of coral, the small dots around the larger dots that we did with the shrimp. And I just start at the top of each of the large dots and work my way around and let the paint kind of run off the paintbrush and make smaller dots as you go. I push a little bit harder at the top too and then lighten up as, on the pressure as I go around with the brush as well and that'll help create the size that you want as well. I don't think I said it earlier, but this stone um, is the mold number two from the Happy Dotting Company as well. It makes the nice, larger, flatter stone. Which I'm kind of really excited about. A little too much coffee today. I'm going to have to paint two-handed tonight. <laughs> but that's okay. Just to steady yourself sometimes, too, when you're working in the smaller spaces. You just kind of make a tripod 
with one of your hands and you can rest your pinky with the hand that you're painting. Rest that down and that'll help give you a little bit more stability when you're doing the small dots especially. There you go. How's yours looking? All right, now I think I'm going to go around here like this with the pink. This one's a peony pink. And I'm just tucking it in between where we just put the ring of dots of the coral around. So I just want to check, I think I want to put a couple dots down towards our center of this pink as well, but I want to make sure I have enough space in between all my larger orange or the shrimp dots. So if you're going to add a new element to the design too, you just want to make sure your spacing is okay before I think I can squeeze them in all around here. All right, now I'm going to go back to the white for a little bit here and just kind of outline the coral dots that we did with white and bring it down to the peony so just do a row of white and just bring them down to that pink that we just put in Okay, just working around each of the larger dots here with that little bit of white. Finish up this last one here. So 
So there you have a pretty solid center started. And of course I'm winging it here, trying to think of what to do next. So I'm going to throw a couple more dots of the, um, probably the dark coral here, just above the pink, just to kind of create a little base for another larger dot. I'm debating here. I think I'm going to do copper. I just really love the way that the copper and the pinks and the corals all tie in together. So I'm pretty sure that's the next one I'm going to do. It's fun just playing around with different color combinations to see what they do. And if you don't like it, you can always change it up the next time or put top dots over it. All right, so here's the copper, and it's the Dazzling Metallics, still from DecoArt. And I'm just going to draw in the larger, larger dots here, just about the same size. The same size as the shrimp colored ones that I did earlier here. Sometimes the metallics can be a little bit thicker, uh, more like the multi-surface paints, so I just kind of push them around a little bit and just make sure I get it into the shape that I want it, but also not too thick so that it starts to drip down the stone before it dries. One of the benefits too though of the metallics, which I love, is they get dry quick like a little skin on the top, kind of like pudding. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going around the copper with some of the white again to just kind of keep bringing that out throughout the piece.
a little too much on that one, so I'm just going to drop some off on the other side over here, that other dot. And you can do that if you realize you have too much paint on a tool, the brush or whatever, you can drop it off on a paper towel or another place on your piece where you're going to use it, just so that you can keep doing the graduated sizes of the dots. Especially if your paint is thinner, sometimes I notice I'll have to do that more. So I just pick up more accidentally on the brush. finish up the last side of this one And I'm just going to do some, it's almost like a swipe, but I'm doing it the opposite direction. I'm going to make a little tiny little, kind of like a swipe heart here, shape. Almost. But just give that little pep of pink. And I'm just really loading up the brush. And then push down hard at the top, and then cross it over and let up a little bit. Push down hard, and then let up to see if that little tail. I'm just doing that all the way around my stone in between the coppers. We'll do some lighter pink just to kind of accent it on the bottom here.
but now I'm just going to go back in and put tiny dots in between the smaller rounds of pink that I did earlier because it's dry in the center now and there's a lot less chance of it bleeding in <laughs> when they're dry so I just go back afterwards and fill in the little details And then the super, super duper tiny, tiny, tiny white one. Alright, now I'm going to grab that nice rich darker pink again. I'm going to go, I think, with a larger dot. But I'm going to show you with the dotting tools now. Just for those of you who don't generally use brushes, you can do these designs that I do with your dotting tools as well. It doesn't have to be with a brush. It's just whatever tool you're more comfortable with using. So this is, with a dotting tool I can make the larger dots too. If I don't have one that's large enough, I just put the paint down and draw it into a circle just like I do with the paintbrush. I just really load it up and then draw my little circle. We'll just do that all the way around. Then you can just kind of reshape them if you need to, just like with the paintbrush, if it doesn't get the exact shape you need. I'm just going to put some top dots of the lighter coral blush on top here. Just to get, give it some dimension. So this is another dotting tool, and it's got a really small, I call it my etcher, I broke one of the ball stylus off the end, 
And I'm just going to use this warm beige. And I'll show you, you can do some swipes even with the dotting tool as well instead of with a brush. And sometimes I find it even easier with the dotting tool. You just have to kind of gauge and get used to practicing how much paint to put on and how large of a swipe it will make. And then we'll do the opposite direction uh, with the beige as well. Sometimes it's easier to drag from the top of the stone like this. If you find that easier, you can do that as well. Just be careful you don't drag your hand through the opposite side where your paint is wet. You can see I'm pushing my hand like a tripod away so I don't, it's kind of a reminder to not rest my hand in the wet paint. But you can do it from the top like this as well. So it's a little more versatile. The brush takes a little getting used to with doing it from different directions. But there you go for those beige. And I think we'll tuck probably a little bit of the coral in. I want to do the white first, maybe. Let me think about what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. 
think I am going to go with a coral and just do shorter ones in here just to kind of change up the outer design a bit. Didn't have quite enough on there. You'll start to realize too how much you need. You could even press the practice on paper ahead of time just to kind of see how much paint to put on each size stylus and then drag it out and you'll get used to the feel of how much you need for what length. I'll grab, let's see here. I'll go with some more of the um, white to just add a little more accent. And I'll just put a dot at the top of those little V's that we just created. Just tuck a few down here at the base of each of those dark pinks as well. Just kind of fill in the negative space a little bit. But I really like the contrast with the black. There you go. It's just a fun, different design. Nice for Valentine's Day with a little heart type shape in the center. Thinking maybe I might do white down below. Add in some top dots here. And you can really make it your own. Add top dots, different colors. Change it up totally with purples or some other colors that you want to put. I was just thinking pink theme for Valentine's Day coming up. It's on my brain. <laughs> 
plus coral is the color of the year, so let's incorporate that, right? I just want to check and make sure I can put a little one underneath all the ones, those big ones that we did. So I hope you are all doing well this new year starting out, ready for new adventures and new designs and just lots more fun, of course. I'm always looking forward to hearing your comments and interacting with you on Facebook and Instagram and the comments here on YouTube. Let me know what you think. Feel free to follow in the other areas and subscribe to this if you want to know when the next videos come out. There we have our little design. And these homemade stones too are perfectly shaped circles so you can really, if you keep your sizing right, it just fits perfectly on these stones. I also sell my art if you're looking to purchase some on Etsy. I'm selling these brushes and dotting tools too. I actually have been getting rid of a lot of the angled ones um, and making making um, sets with them, little rock painting kits and whatnot. So, all right. I hope you're all doing well. I look forward to another video coming up soon, hopefully, and happy painting to you all. Have a great evening.